Uh, but uh, what I wanted to talk about today, and I promise not to bore you, I'll talk a little bit about vein disease and how we go about treating it and how the options nowadays have become a lot less invasive so that we don't have to do a lot of surgery to get a pretty common problem under control. And so like I said, I promise not to bore you, and I hope I don't make you sick by looking at some of the pictures that we'll see. Um, I just want to talk about vein disease and how common it is. As we all get older, the veins in our legs tend to start to fail, and they allow blood to flow in the wrong direction towards your foot instead of back up towards your heart. Blood should always be flowing in the veins from your toes back up into your chest. It should never be flowing in the wrong direction. When it does flow in the wrong direction, you have increased pressure or venous hypertension. Everybody knows about regular blood pressure, high blood pressure. Well, this is high blood pressure in the vein system. So how common is it? You can see up here that um, superficial vein disease is the most common of all vein diseases. As we get older, it's going to affect upwards of 40% of the population, and 50% of those people will be symptomatic, and will go through all the different symptoms that you can experience. Uh, it's less common in men than women, and that's directly a consequence of the female hormone. And it's estimated that uh, about a quarter of women and about 10 to 50% of men will have some significant problems with vein disease uh, over the course of your, of your life. Next slide. So again, just to go over it, that translates in the United States to about 80, 80 million people with vein disease. And um, between 25 to 50 million people with varicose veins, which is the most obvious manifestation of, of vein disease. Um, about 1 million people will have bad enough symptoms to seek out treatment. And it's much more common than artery disease. And as the baby boom generation gets older, there's going to be a lot more people with this problem. And again, this just tells you about how more frequent it gets as you get older. Younger people, we see it somewhat, but very uncommonly. Middle-aged people, a little more common. And you can see once you get up into your seventh decade, it's very, very common. So what happens when the vein flows in the wrong direction? Well, when you're standing up and when you're sitting in a dependent, you know, your legs are down, gravity will pull blood in the wrong direction, back down towards your feet. We're all born with valves in our veins that prevent blood from flowing back down toward the feet. When you get up and walk around, the muscles pump the veins and will pump the blood back up towards your heart. When those valves in, the, in those veins fail, blood will flow in the wrong direction and it will increase the pressure in the tissues in your feet and in your legs. And so what happens then? You get swelling in your legs. That's one of the first things that you notice. Then you'll get pain because the leg will be swollen and by the end of the day, your leg will be kind of heavy, almost like you're wearing a five pound weight on it. Um, you can get infections. The skin will stretch only so much and the skin will get little breaks in it and then you'll have a little cut that turns into an infection and you can even wind up in the hospital. And that's what cellulitis is. You can get breakdown of the skin to where you get an ulcer. And then you might need to come see me in the wound center to try to get that ulcer to heal up. When the leg is swollen and the skin is broken down, it takes a lot longer for a wound like that to heal up. You can get bleeding. Some people will have a varicose vein and they'll just tap their leg on a wheelchair or on a cane or on a walker. And the next thing you know, they're bleeding like crazy. And that's because there's so much extra pressure in that vein. And you have to hold pressure, and, and a lot of times that vein has to be cut out, otherwise it'll keep bleeding. Um, and you get something called SVT, which is superficial venous thrombosis. That's just a fancy term for um, a, a little clot in the, in the vein uh, on the superficial uh, uh, leg right on the skin. And, It'll be like a little cord underneath your skin. It'll be hot, it'll be red, it'll be sore. It'll be enough to make you go to the doctor and say, hey, what's going on here? And again, that's because the flow in the vein is so sluggish that the, the blood actually clots. People can get something called a DVT, and I'm sure you've heard about that. That's when you get a clot in the deep veins of your legs. Those are the veins that run alongside the muscles and run alongside the bones. 
when you get a clot in there, typically your doctor comes at you with the rat poison, which is the, the blood thinner, so that the vein, so the clot in the vein breaks down. That's a bad problem, but it can be managed. You can also get an embolism where that clot breaks off and goes up into your, into your lungs and can cause you some trouble. And then, of course, you can get the unsightly varicose veins that we all look at and see as we get older in our legs. Next slide. So what are the physical manifestations? You'll get swollen. That's what edema is. Your legs will get pigmented. So it almost looks like you have a continuous suntan on your legs from the discoloration. What happens is, is the extra pressure in the veins causes uh, blood to leak out of the veins on a microscopic level. And then it's like a small bruise, and your body has to break that blood down. So it breaks the blood down into the pigments. So it's almost like your, your legs become bruised from this. Um, you can get, um, again, uh, irritation of the skin, which is stasis dermatitis. You can get thickening of the skin, which is this big fancy term here. You can get ulcers, you can get infection, you can get tissue death because of the pressure, and then of course you can get some deformities as a result of that. Here are some of the nasty pictures. This is venous stasis. That's that suntan on your legs that I was talking about. A lot of people have this. They think it's just age spots. No, this is a consequence of increased vein flow. Next slide. This is a picture of it up close, typically. It's brownish, it's scaly, it's dry, and um, if this skin tries to break down, it's very difficult to get it to heal up. And unfortunately, it can progress to something like this, where you have a lot of skin breakdown, the bacteria get in, the, get in there, and then you wind up getting a nasty infection. Again, sometimes you can be treated with antibiotics by mouth, and sometimes you wind up in the hospital. And then here's the visible deformity. I don't know how well it shows up, but you can see these are giant varicose veins. And that's a sign that blood has been flowing in the wrong direction, and those veins have been stretched out because there's too much pressure in the vein system. Uh, what are some predisposing factors? I think we all kind of know about them. Number one, if it's been in your family and it runs in your family, chances are you might get it. And that's what that first thing is. So if, you're, if your parent has had reflux problems, you're twice as more likely to get it over the course of your lifetime. Pregnancy in a woman, you know, when you have the uterus pushing on things, it puts pressure on the veins, it doesn't allow the blood to come back up, those veins will fail as a result of multiple pregnancies. Hormone influences, estrogen directly causes those veins to dilate, causes the valves to fail. One of the things that's not listed up here is smoking. Smoking also causes those, those veins to fail prematurely. Um, if you stand up all your life, if you work on an assembly line, you walk on concrete, you're a bank teller, you're a surgeon, uh-oh. <laughs> That's why I wear my compression hose. Um, standing occupations, people that stand in one position for a long period of time, their veins can fail over time. Um, obesity is another big risk factor. If you've had clots in the veins before, and then as we get older, those are the main risk factors. So what are the goals of treatment? The goals of treatment are to stop the blood from flowing in the wrong direction. You want to stop the vein reflux. And, um, and, and, and the goal is to get rid of those leaky veins, and then people say, well, what happens if you get rid of that vein? Isn't my circulation going to be worse? No. Actually, your circulation will get better, because blood will be flowing in the right direction as opposed to flowing in the wrong direction. That varicose vein that you have, that leaky vein that you have, is doing you harm. It's not doing you any good. So when I talk about how we get rid of these things, you'll be like, oh, gosh, you're going to cook my veins? Yeah, because they're, they're not doing you any good, they're doing you harm. Next slide. Before, um, and this is not too long ago, when I first uh, became a doctor about 20 years ago, these are some of the things we would do to people. Has anybody ever heard of a vein stripping? Nope. Has anybody had a vein stripping? My sister did. Okay. Did, they, did she tell you how bad it hurt? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it hurt like heck. I'm sure it did. For lack of a better description, we take you to the operating room, we knock you out, we run a, a, a long plastic cord from the vein up here all the way down to your ankle, and we'd be like, is everybody ready? Okay, we're all ready. One, two, three. And we just rip that entire vein out of your leg. And you'd bruise from all the connections that were severed, you'd have to be wrapped, your leg would hurt, it's almost like somebody hits you with a bat. 
and you'd hurt for about two or three weeks, you'd be limping around, but eventually you'd heal up and your, and, your, and your varicose veins would get better because the vein that was leaking is gone. Nowadays, we don't have to do that. Um, you could ligate the vein as well all the way with the top, but again, that's a surgical procedure. You could uh, strip the veins out in the operating room, which is still done to some extent, but again, it's invasive. And then this last procedure called the limb procedure, where we go in and ligate some of the leaky veins in the leg. That was a big surgery. It's, that type of procedure should just be in the history books. It really shouldn't be performed anymore. So what can we do for you now as opposed to 15, 20, 30 years ago? Instead of going in and ripping that vein out that's leaking, we can go in with a little catheter through a little device and, and seal that vein off. And the way we seal it off is with two different modalities. The first one here is RF. That's radio frequency energy. That's um, basically heating the vein to the point where it, it clots off and goes away. <coughs> the other thing that we do too is the same method but a different, different modality. Um, it's using the laser, and the laser itself generates heat and causes the vein to, to close up. Go ahead, next slide. Um, so that's how we treat the, the main leaky vein, that's called the greater saphenous vein, and it runs from your groin all the way down to your ankle. And instead of stripping that vein out, we can access the vein, slide the catheter in, apply either the heat energy or the laser energy, and get the vein to clot from the inside out. And the vein will scar down and it will go away and it won't leak anymore. When it comes to those other accessory veins, you know, the veins that dilate up as a consequence of the leaky vein, there are other ways to get rid of them as well. You can strip the vein out in the, uh, in the office just using uh, uh, local anesthetic and a little vein hook. Um, this is something that's kind of at the forefront, but it's not something we could really do the power of phlebectomy. Uh, that's pretty done in bigger centers. The radio frequency ablation is what I just talked about. With the leaky perforator veins, there was a surgery that I used to do as well that's pretty much not being done anymore because nowadays when you have a leaky vein that's in the calf, um, instead of, again, trying to go in there surgically and tying it off and ripping it out, what you can go in and do is you can use ultrasound to find the vein in the office and inject a little bit of um, sclerosin. Which is, a, which is a chemical that irritates the inside of the vein and causes the vein to just clot off. And that's something that can be done in the office with just some local anesthesia as opposed to going to the operating room. And uh, also we can laser veins as well. And that, for that you need a little more complex laser. I don't think that's available here. But uh, very simply with the radio frequency ablation, it's a minimally invasive treatment. It can be done in the office with some oral sedation. Um, we would basically just clean your leg up. We would access the vein that's leaking here with uh, ultrasound, feed the catheter up. You'd be awake during the whole procedure. Um, we would inject some numbing medication around the vein because when we generate the heat, it can you know, damage the surrounding tissues. Um, when you use the laser, you put on the funny glasses so that you don't injure your eyes from the laser. But with radio frequency ablation, it's, a, it's heat generated, so you don't need the funny glasses. But we basically just um, turn up the turn up the heat, pull the catheter back slowly, heat the inside of the vein to where it just clots off. Um, and um, this is what happens: you, you heat up the tissue, it causes the vein wall connective tissue to contract, and it pretty much just gets rid of the vessel within. Five minutes of the treatment, you can put the ultrasound probe on that vein, and then that vein is pretty much clotted off. It's gone. And this is the, the system. It's a very simple system. This is the catheter that goes in, and it's a you know you have to order kits, so it's used. It's a different catheter for each person, and that's the heating unit over there that modulates how much you know energy is applied. So it's not a random burst. It's a very controlled amount of energy that's delivered to the vein so that we know we can get it clotted off without hurting the surrounding tissues. The nice thing about this procedure is, is we can do it in the office, and you go home with a leg wrap, and you're back to regular activities within a day or so. Um, this is what I normally recommend for people after they have the procedure. They can go back to regular activities pretty much right away. They're advised to walk fairly frequently during the course of the next few days. Again. Sitting or standing for prolonged periods of time is always a big no-no when it comes to veins. 
Um, we just wanted to refrain from strenuous activities for a few days. We do have a compression wrap. I usually tell people to take the wrap off in about 24 hours. And you will wear a compression hose for about a week to two weeks afterward to keep pressure on that area so that the vein doesn't try to open back up. Um, pain medication, typically just some over-the-counter stuff is all you really need. And then we have you come back at intervals, usually a week, a month, and two months later to make sure the vein is clotted off. The nice thing about it is the symptomatic relief is almost immediate. The next day, you're not feeling a lot of discomfort from the procedure, and you notice that your leg doesn't feel heavy anymore. Your leg doesn't feel aggravated at night. It doesn't wake you up at night because it's, it's cramping because of the swelling that you've accumulated during the course of the day. And it's very rewarding for the patient and for the doctor, too, because I can stand there and say, I can give you a new pair of legs just by getting rid of those leaky veins. And I think that's pretty much it. I try to keep it short, that way I don't bore you. But um, this is one of the nice services that we offer here. Uh, if you do have symptoms like this, you could come to Surgical Associates. We'd have you fill out a questionnaire. We take pictures of your legs. We document your symptoms. Um, in order to identify the leaky veins, you need a, a non-invasive ultrasound of each leg. You come back and talk with us afterward. If you do, in fact, have the vein reflux, we can target exactly where the reflux is. You might be a candidate for the radiofrequency ablation, or you might be a candidate for the sclerotherapy all of which can be done in the office as opposed to going to the operating room. I would like to think that nowadays taking care of vein problems like this should be an office-based procedure. You should not have to go up to the hospital and have anything.